Good morning, beautiful people. Y'all may know, y'all may not know, but when I moved to Charlotte, I started back working full time, not in real estate, but full time at another job. And I have been doing real estate basically part time. So because I'm in a new city, I'm essentially starting over again. I'm essentially building my business from scratch, building my business, you know, from the Pillsbury dough, like, you know, I'm whipping it up from scratch. So I have been toying around with the idea of how I wanted to approach my real estate business since I have gone back to work full time. And I ain't gonna lie, it's been really, really tough. Very tough because I'm like, I'm very passionate about working with buyers, but the time that it takes when you're working with buyers, it, it is very time intensive to show properties and about time I get off, honestly, like I could probably show maybe one or two houses, maybe, if it's in the same area, like each day. And that's just for one client. Most, most of the other showings that I would be able to do is on the weekends. And so I was like, okay, well maybe I can do like one or two and just let my clients know that I'm basically available more so on the weekends for showings but I don't know I don't feel like so good about that idea so I've really like just been toying around with the idea of how I wanted to approach my real estate business now that I'm in work full-time and so the other idea I had was like okay I can be fully a listing agent and fully represent sellers I don't know like I don't know and then another part of me was like oh I can work with um renters and tenants and finding a home for lease and build my business that way and then eventually those people that I have helped to rent or lease an apartment a home whatever that may be they'll eventually buy and build my business that way so I've really been toying around with the idea I've also been toying around with the idea of being a solo agent versus being on a team or group. If you've been following my journey, you know that I started this journey out being a solo agent and then I joined a team in the Raleigh area and then I was also on a team when I was living in Asheville, North Carolina. I really enjoyed the team dynamics. Um, so I've just kind of been like toying around with that idea. So anyways, because of that, I finally decided that I think that I, I'm pretty sure that I want to be on a team again because what that's going to do is provide me with leverage and resources and just a wealth of information and being around people who are also go-getters. It's also very helpful to be on a team because you have transaction coordinators who are able to assist with my deals and my clients while I'm at work. Like you just have a better support all around. Um, this particular team, so right now, let me catch y'all up. I am on a way to the Keller Williams Charlotte office and I am going to be interviewing with a team. I, I say interviewing, but really I'm interviewing them to see if I would be a good fit with their team and they're you know interviewing me to see if I would be a good fit as well so we're kind of like interviewing each other and so I don't know like this team seems really like it's large I think they have over 80 agents so that would be different for me most teams that I've been on in the past has been like 10 people or less so very not a large team but this team will have over 80 agents but they're very well established and I think they get a lot of their business from like third parties and then like repeats and referrals they seem like they have a really great culture which I love like they're out in the community they're out doing things and then I really love this they have a whole truck fleet for assisting clients with their move-ins and move-outs and all of that, or whether they're just calling close to the nearest Goodwill. So I was like, okay, that's a nice perk. But on this particular team, they have a transaction coordinator, they have a showing assistant, they have marketing um, executives, uh, executive assistant so it is like a full running team like they have all the pieces to the pie they have an onboarding specialist and so I'm like okay 
in terms of me working full time, like I think this is what I would need, just like a whole group of people who are supportive and who have like all of these additional roles that I can kind of depend on. I am on my way to go interview with this team. I'm about 13 minutes away. And so when I get there, I will show you guys like an overview of the Keller Williams Charlotte office of where I actually work and do business. I've just kind of been laying low, sitting back, watching the real estate scene for the Charlotte market, showing houses to a few people who are interested in rentals. Like since I've been here, I've been here in the Charlotte area now for December, about eight months. So I feel like it's time to really like hop back in the game. If you guys know, I also just had a newborn. So I feel like I kind of took a hiatus for that, but I feel like a brand new real estate agent. Not brand new, no, not brand new. But I feel like I'm starting my business all over again, which essentially I am because I'm in a different geographic location. So it takes time to, you know, build your pipeline and get people thinking of you as a real estate agent in this area, but I'm determined. So my goal for this year, for 2023, is I want to be closing at a minimum of two homes per month for the rest of the year. So starting in, and typically a closing is like 30 days, so I would definitely wanna give myself grace, but I say starting in August, my goal is to assist two families every single month with closing a home right here in the Charlotte area. So that's what I'm on a mission to do. And I wanna start this in August. Well, I wanna start now, but I know closings take typically 30 days. So, and we're already at the end of June. It's already, I think, June 26, I think. So basically we're in July. So my goal is to close two homes in August, September, October, November, December. And that will close me out at about 11 closings for this year because I've already had like one at the very beginning of the year that kind of lingered over from last year. So that's where we are. And I'm really excited about this goal. I'm really excited about interviewing um, with this team. And so I'll let you guys know how it goes and I will give you guys a little tour of the KW Charlotte office as soon as I arrive. And also I hope y'all, I need another car. I hope this car don't give out because I'm not trying to be stuck at nobody's office or on the side of the road today. Like I'm just not like, is giving real ghetto so yeah we need to get a car that is one of the reasons why i am setting these what i feel like to be very aggressive goals because i need things <laughs> i need things i need a new car i need um i need a new investment property yeah i need that what is going on with this traffic but yeah i want my kids schooling to be paid for as well like, why is the traffic not moving? But I want my kids' schooling to be paid for as well. I want my kids to be in extracurricular activities. And I want this debt to be paid down. Like, debt is like, ugh. Like, why? Why is it there? Why do we have debt? Ugh, I just want it to be gone. So, I am setting very aggressive goals because, y'all, I'm just, I'm tired, y'all. I need for things to happen for me and my family husband is the same way so yeah let's get it let's get 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 it all right y'all I just show up to the office okay y'all <laughs> sorry I was like I don't know sometimes when people be like sometimes I don't care when people looking at me but most of the time I don't really care but I don't know, I don't know these people like that so Oh, should I wear my heels? I should definitely wear my heels. I got on sneakers. It's my outfit. But I bought some cute black sandals, like with the heel on them. So I'm gonna put those on. Hold on. I'm gonna put on these sandals so it look a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? Professional. And I got a white toe polish. <laughs> Okay. 
I really don't think like, okay, so this office has about, I wanna say like 600 agents. Yeah, I think the office has about 600 agents, something like that, something close. It's a lot of people in this office. But a lot of times people don't really be in an office like that. All right, this is much better. When I first uh, joined this firm, they gave me this name tag. Oh, did I just run into a spider web? Oh, oh my God. But um, yeah, they gave me this name tag. So I'm gonna put this on. Wait, let me show y'all the front. So this is the outside of the building. It's a mixed office. So it has other businesses that are within this actual office. So when you go into this little lobby area, you actually have to take the elevators up to the actual floor. So for example, that's another business right there. Let's just try to see my outfit. I look cute. I'm gonna put my name tag right there. Oh, there it is. I got it on the first try. Keller Williams South Park. So cute. I might work in here. Another conference room. Got little brochures, printer. It's all the agents. See if I have any mail. Camille, I got two pieces of mail. Got two pieces of mail in my mailbox. So cute. This is all the like team offices. Hutchins Law Firm, KW Commercial. This is like, I might, I actually might work in here. It's more personal. Phone loans, and then this is like the area. So cute. Wherever I work, I need a plug. Training room. Training room. That's good. Okay. So, Every Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, and that's on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Oh, Wednesdays. Oh. 
Everybody can use it. We open it up for the office. Yeah, I, I'm i technically working right now I'm because um, I still have my full-time job. Oh, so, okay. yeah, so I'm probably going to step out so I can have a quiet place. Okay. But, yeah, and then I have that meeting at 1130, and then I'll yeah. be off-site. But my goal, because I went back to work full-time, so I'm trying to gotcha. transition full-time back to real estate. Gotcha. Now, what do you do? Uh, I work at hotels. I'm a catering manager oh, with like okay. events and stuff like yeah. that. Okay. So, yeah. trying to transition back out. <laughs> Office is right here. Okay. And you can shut the door and mm -hmm. stay in as long as you need to. Okay. It's like free for anyone. Yep, free for okay. Anyone. Yep. That's nice. Yep. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Because <laughs> I'm work from home today, but I was going to use my lunch break to um, meet with the team. So I'm just trying to get set up. And honestly, this office is a lot better than working from home. <laughs> this is actually an office. So here, that's really nice. All right, we are rocking and rolling. So yeah, I am, for my full-time job, I'm just responding to clients and stuff. I am um, a catering manager, so I work with events at hotels. And so I do have like some events to work on. So I'll be working on that this morning. Aww. This bride chose another venue because their space, you didn't, they needed minimal decoration. And they had like multiple places where you could host the reception, cocktail hour, ceremony. So it was a lot more flexibility with their spaces. That's great feedback. I love when people tell me like why they chose to go like somewhere else. But yeah, y'all, I graduated with a degree in hospitality and tourism. So I've always worked in hotels since graduating. So real estate was really something new that I had embarked on when COVID happened and I just absolutely fell in love with it. And, um, you know, I was full-time realtor for three years. And then when we moved to Charlotte, I went back to part-time and I just miss it so much. Like I miss it a lot being like full-time, like it's totally different. It's totally different being a part-time real estate agent and a full-time real estate agent. And I made a, like recently, I made a video about this, about like how difficult and challenging it is. But like, it is very challenging, especially when you don't have like a support group. So that is why I am meeting with the team. Our appointment or our meeting is for 11.30 today. And right now it's 8.55, so I have about two hours essentially like two and a half hours before i meet with them um so yeah i'm just gonna do some work and i'll check in with y'all later minutes and <clears throat> I'm just going to go through my notes and just prepare a few questions that I have for the team and go from there there's a lot more agents in the office right now like at 11 o'clock so I guess most agents are early birds so I was here around like eight this morning <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but it seems like most of the agents get to the office like around like lunchtime. Gosh, something is in my throat. Mm. 
Mm. Wow, that is some good coffee. That is great coffee. So we have like a coffee machine in the office every morning coffee is brewed and then there's like all the creamers and sugars and everything like that it's complimentary gosh <coughs> i feel like something really got in my throat so i need to catch y'all up really quick so i'm actually leaving the office now come to find out i text the recruiter for the team that i'm interviewing at and they actually have a whole separate office a whole separate location that is not within like this building the keller williams building so with that being said i'm about to hop in my car and drive 15 minutes away to their location of where they actually are so now i'm gonna be late i'm gonna be like probably probably like 12 minutes late but that sucks because like i literally drove all the way out here and um yeah i've been sitting here since eight o'clock this morning but it's okay because at least i got the opportunity to see the office so that was nice and i got the opportunity to give you guys a tour of the office oh my god i really can't believe myself like that's very camille of me like why didn't I look closer at the calendar invite? And y'all, I hope my car starts. Because how embarrassing would that be? Like, it's been giving me issues lately. So, yeah. Yay, my car started. Y'all, I think it's something going on with like the battery or starter or something like that because sometimes they act like it don't want to start like it'll hesitate it'll hesitate when i put the key in the ignition but she started so we're good so this is actually like our i don't want to say junk car get around car dog car car with the most space moving car because my car I purchased it like some years ago and come to find out like the airbags are deployed and because I have two little boys like it's not safe to drive that car anymore so she's just been sitting Snow White has just been sitting so yeah that's where we are with that oh was that my turn okay I don't think that was my turn anyways let me um drive so I can get to where I need to go because I'm already late but yeah so that's where we are with that. Let me see if I can prop y'all up. Oh my God. But yeah, so that's where we are with that. Like Snow White is just done. She, she's gone. But yeah, we need to get her back up. working car as a real estate agent is like super important and very vital because most of the time you are in the car and you spend a lot of time in the car so yeah but yeah y'all i am really tripping on myself like how was i sitting there for three hours at the wrong location like be for real be for real anyways Thankfully, in this industry, like, people really don't be tripping like that. Like, most real estate agents, most firms, like, we're pretty, like, go with the flow. Like, we're very flexible. So, it's not like a regular job to where, like, oh, girl, you late for your interview. Like, ugh, super bad look. I will check in with y'all when I arrive to their office, which is basically, like, 15 minutes away from the uh, Keller Williams uh, South Park office. And then... I don't know if I'll be able to give a tour since I'm already late, but we're gonna see. So I'll see y'all when I get there. Hey guys, I just showed up. It's 11.42. As y'all know, it was supposed to start at 11.30. So I'll show y'all the outside of the area. I'm kind of familiar with this area because I used to live over here like when we first moved to Charlotte, but look. They have their own fleet, their own fleet of trucks for moving, which is so nice. That's okay. 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 Um, so this is kind of like our 
you know, opening room. Okay. Uh, it's really kind of set up for called the Think Tank. Okay. Uh, oh, that's pretty. So it's uh, energy. Alrighty. I just finished meeting with the team. It was really good, but um, if I could be honest, it was. Uh, I don't know. I feel so torn. So I'll give y'all the scoop as soon as I get home, but I'm kind of like disappointed, but also super motivated all at the same time. So I will tell y'all why when I get home and have a chance to just, you know, debrief on our conversation and what was communicated and kind of go from there. But yeah, it's giving very like disappointed right now, um, but it's okay because guy has a better plan so i'm just gonna go home and sit with the information and then i will pop back on here to tell you guys about my experience and um just my overall view of the office the team everything like that and kind of go from there so i will i will um talk to y'all soon <laughs> trying to smile trying to smile through it all. I'll talk to y'all soon. So I'm back home. I haven't eaten all day, so I'm literally eating leftovers. I'm eating hot dogs and this steak, oh my God, y'all, this steak is so freaking good. It's so good. My husband made some steaks on the grill like this past Sunday. Y'all, when I tell you this steak is so good, like, mm. It's so tender, seasoned so well. I love when he cooked. Yesterday we had hibachi, like he made hibachi on the grill. Mmm. So good. I can't wait for dinner tonight because I'm definitely heating up that hibachi for dinner. Like, let me show y'all. Yesterday when he was cooking on the grill. Like, do y'all see that magnificence? Like, come on, be for real. I love when he cooks. His food is so good. But he don't cook, like, that often. But when he do cook, it be so good. But anyways, I'm back home. And I just kind of want to tell y'all, like, my overall experience of, like, my interview with that particular team. So going into the office, like everybody was super nice. Everybody was super friendly. Like they started off giving me a tour of their office, which is separate from the KW South Park office. Like they have their own thing going because their team is so large. And then they have one team in Charlotte and then there's another team in Asheville, but we like went through the office. And like when you come in, like you kind of notice like the little sit-in area. He was telling me that's where all the agents like meet with their clients and if they have a client that they don't necessarily feel comfortable with they can come into the office and just meet there and then like one of my favorite parts of the office was they have this little room called think tank and it's basically like all soundproof so if you need to just have like a quiet moment in there you can go inside of the think tank if you want to read a book or if you want to do like lead generation. It's just like a quiet space. No one can hear you inside of there. Like if you're taking a phone call, but then also you can't hear outside noise either. So I thought that was like a huge, huge plus. Then they had like this little snack area for all the agents to basically like get snacks and stuff. And then around the corner, there was like this small kitchen where you can like bring your lunch and just put stuff in the refrigerator. It was like a coffee station. And then like in the back, there was like this entire like massive area. I'm gonna see if I can find a picture like from someone else that I can put into this video of like what the back part looked like. But essentially it was like rectangular tables, like a bunch of rectangular tables for agents that are a part of their team to like sit and collaborate and brainstorm and just work. It was like pretty much like an open co-working space back there. And then it also had like their lock boxes, like yard signs that you can, you know, would come complimentary as being a part of the team. And then there was a ping pong table because uh, apparently the owner loves ping pong. So it was like a great collaborative space to be a part of. 
Mm. Sorry. And there was like a lot of agents just like working or whatever there when I went. It was probably like a handful of agents like actually in the office. I'd say probably like 12 maybe out of like the 60 or 70 agents that they do have. And then around the corner from there, it was like an office space designated for W-2 employees only. So everybody that's on payroll, they have like their own cubicles. And then you keep walking and then it was a marketing team. There was two of them on the marketing team that handles like all of the social media. If there's an event that's going on, if there's mailers that need to be sent out, like it was two of them in there and then I met them. And then at the very front, there was like an additional like conference space essentially to where you can host like a little private meeting. But that's where I sat with the recruiters to have a conversation about, you know, what it entailed being on their team. So we talked about like culture, um, of course, money, team splits, like commission splits, um, lead generation, what's required of agents when they like on board and what I really like about this particular team is just like they have a lot of leads they have a lot of volume but I like the way like it was set up like when you first become an agent with them like you're in like one tier and then as you get more real estate transactions you fall into another tier and essentially you get more like commission um it was a really nice meeting. They also like do really cool things to keep agents like motivated. They have like this little poker type of like system to where like you can collect poker chips for like basically job well done. Like if you get a client under contract, if you get a Zillow review, if you like have a close in, if you assist another agent in the office, then all of those poker chips can add up to grand prizes like iPads and computers and vacation time. So I thought that was like a really, really nice perk. Um, we went over like the CRM system, like which I already use that particular CM CRM system that they use. So it will basically be a super smooth transition for me because I've already been using that CRM for so long already. We also talked about what they use for communicating with other team members. And I really like their platform because essentially it's like their own Facebook. Like there's different groups that you can be a part of where you can, uh, there's like a shadowing group, like if you want to shadow a home inspection or shadow a showing or shadow a closing. And then, of course, if you assist that other agent with like shadowing or whatever, you can get a poker chip, which is really cool. And then they have other groups where it's like a lead group and the first person to claim the lead technically will get an opportunity to work the lead. So it's just like a lot of like collaborations and because the group is so large and all the agents are helping others if someone asks for like a vendor recommendation or a contractor recommendation you have like four or five agents popping in to say like hey this person is great i had this experience so i really like that like small knit group collaborative type of environment that's really really nice i took some notes but yeah, um, a lot of their leads, like I said, comes from third parties. And yeah, it just seemed like a really good fit with where I am. So here's the caveat. Here's the downfall. Here's the pitfall. This is why I was so disappointed when we went over this information. It had mostly to do with like the requirements for joining so with this team, you have to attend one training per month, one mandatory training uh, per month. All agents have to attend this training, which is, you know, fine. It's just one time out of the month. It's perfectly fine. And you also, as a new agent with them, whether you're new or old, it doesn't matter. But as being a part of their team, you have to be in the office on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. You guys already know my situation. Like, I have a full-time job that I actually really need because um with both my income and my husband income that's how we pay our bills so 
we both need to work to pay our bills. So that was like the downfall because it's like, they were basically saying like, this is you taking a leap of faith and like basically betting on yourself. And so their expectation when you join is to be in the office three times a week from 10 to two. That way you can get more acclimated with the culture. And the reason that they started doing this is because they seen a, a, a higher rate of success of agents that were in the office versus agents that were not in the office or essentially part-time agents. And I don't know. So that was like a bummer because it's like catch 22 is like, yeah, I can bet on myself. But it's always like that. What if, like, what if I don't close a deal? Well, it's not even that I don't think I would close a deal, but it's like the timing because we need like money like next month to pay our bills. Like closings, it already take 30 days. So it's just like we don't really have like enough money saved to kind of like embark on this journey again full time and like take that leap of faith. So it's just hard. It's a hard decision. I don't really know how else to put it. But also like I feel so internally motivated that I'm like, you can do this Camille. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I should get like, uh, what's the word? Th uh, job working third shift, like overnight. And then at least that's some type of income. And then do real estate like during the day. Like, I don't know, but I know that if you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you will be successful. That's one of my favorite quotes by Eric Thomas. He said, if you want to succeed as bad as you want or need to breathe, at that point, you will be successful. I don't know what to do, y'all. Like, And then it's like a flip side because like, my family means the world to me and I'm not going to disappoint my sons, plural, my boys. Like I'm not going to disappoint my husband in no way. Like I don't want our family to lack. But it's also like in a current state that we're in, like we're also not progressing. So we're just like at this standstill. And I think this video is getting too long, but basically like that was like the downfall of everything. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know if I'm gonna just like try to close a few real estate transactions to get like some savings. That way I feel more comfortable taking that leap of faith. And you know, like if the closings do take time, at least we have, some savings to fall back on so i don't know if i'm gonna like go hard to try to like do that or like i don't know like or if i'm gonna try to get like a part-time job that's maybe like third shift i don't know y'all i'm stressed i'm very well i'm not even stressed because i know that god works in mysterious ways and things always turn out the way that they are supposed to and the way that they are meant and destined to. So honestly, like I'm not worried, but I do know that I need to have some type of plan of how this is all gonna work. So that's what I'm gonna be thinking about. But anyways, if you guys made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you um, enjoy this true journey of what it's like to start a real estate career and what challenges are posed. And I hope you enjoyed the little office tour that we did, but this is like real life, day in the life of real estate agent. And all of this is new to me because this is the first time where I've had a full-time job trying to make real estate work. Like how I want it to work. Like I'm doing real estate, but it's not in the way that I envision doing real estate. So it's technically new for me. Like, but anyways, I want to end this video on a positive note. So I always tell other people and I have to always tell myself, do whatever it is that makes you happy and everything else will fall in line. And always remember to take baby steps because baby steps are better than no steps. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.